Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from Maggie'sCrochet.com and I'm here to introduce you to a bunch of new baby booty patterns that we're going to be featuring on YouTube and these are all free patterns and this collection here starts out with the same exact bottom like you start with the toe and then you go to rows and then we all we did was switch off the cuffs on all of these and we use different yarns. So most all of these yarns that you see here are available at maggiescrochet.com and the links to everything are going to be listed below including the patterns and the yarns and I thought I'd just show you a couple of them. This one is, uh, these were made from Prism and there's a blue, beautiful blue um, variegated um, color and then the pink color then so you could see those here this was a sport weight cotton yarn and most of these are like sport weight or maybe a little bit lighter but you can try using maybe a light worsted weight yarn that would work also and they might come out just a little bit bigger but um, it'd be fun just to experiment with different types of yarns this one was done with um, Cotton Fair by Premier and this is Mary Maxim's Twinkle Yarn which we carry and we also carry this one. These were done, I love these, um, were done with this Afternoon Cotton which is I think sport weight. And um, I'm also going to be showing you other booties using different um, brands of yarn and one of them I've already designed is Woolies Thick and Quick and I think that's as thick as you can go for a baby booty uh, but it's really really adorable so um, I've already designed those and those are really cute those will be coming out in the future so this will introduce you to a lot of different uh, baby booties and there might be additional ones um, other than these also. So I hope that you enjoy these projects and right now I'm gonna take you to a close-up and Christina is gonna show you how to make these adorable little gifts that you can give away and um, use for your baby. Hey everybody, it's Christina from Maggie'sCrochet.com and today I'm gonna show you how to make this adorable little booty. We're calling it Daisy Jane because of this adorable little daisy uh, that we're going to put on the front. So for this you'll need uh, your three colors of yarn, yellow, white, and green for the uh, base of the booty. So you'll need the most of that. Now your pattern uh, is going to suggest a B or C hook for this booty. Uh, I found that to get the right size I needed to use an E. So I'll be using the uh, Dreams E hook for this and then I'm going to make the flower with a hook one size smaller. So this is a, a D, a three millimeter that I'm going to use for the flower. Uh, I've also got my yarn needle and my snippers right here. So I think I'm all set and ready to go. We'll start with the booty itself. So taking your green on whatever hook you decide is uh, best for the size booty that you're trying to make, chain four, and then into the fourth chain from the hook, so the one closest to the slip knot here, we'll do 11 double crochets. So you'll yarn over, insert down into the chain, pick up a loop, draw a loop through two of the loops on the hook, and then draw a loop through the remaining two. So I'll do that ten more times, then I'll come back to show you the end of the round. So there I've got my twelve double crochets, counting also the, uh, the chain that I started with. Now if you're like me, you may find that as you work in that chain stitch closest to your slip knot, it's going to want to spread out a little bit. But you know what, that's not a problem at all, because if you just grab that tail of your slip knot, pull on it a little bit, you'll see it close right up. Perfect. So now we'll just join this together for slip knot. So count into that chain up one, two, three in the top one. Insert your hook, do your slip knot, and there you've just ended round one. I like to leave this tail on the back of my work uh, for a little while because it helps me remember which side is my right side and wrong side, especially if I'm going to be putting this up and picking it down. So I know that's my wrong side and this is my right side that I'm looking at. For round two, we'll chain three. 
work a double crochet in that first same stitch and then we'll work two double crochets in every stitch around so round one we ended with 12 double crochets at the end of round two we should have 24 double crochets so I'll do that and then come back uh, at the end of round two at the end of round two you've got 24 stitches and we'll join with a slip stitch just as we did before now rounds three four and five are all worked exactly the same um, you'll start after you slip stitch together the previous round you'll start by chaining three and then work a double crochet into each double crochet around so at the end of this round, I'll still have 24 stitches. I'll do the same thing for rounds four and five, and then I'll come back and show you what to do after that. At the end of round five, your booty should look something like this. You can go ahead and uh, finish off your end up there. Now remember how I said that I like to leave my tail to remind me which side was the wrong side? Well, this is the wrong side, so I want to take a minute and flip it right side out before I continue any further. Now using the same green that you've been using, we're going to connect it um, to the tip of our booty here, 12 stitches from where we just finished off. It's going to be pretty much halfway across, but we'll go ahead and count just to be sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, and that is the 12 stitch right there. So just with your green and a slip stitch on your hook, insert into the stitch, pull loop up from the back, and pull it right through on your hook. Next you'll chain three, and we're going to work a double crochet in every stitch around, even over um, where we just finished off our rounds. Now. We're working in rows now, not rounds, so when we get over to the end, we'll uh, chain three, turn, go up and turn. You might be wondering why we're not doing that just from right where we ended well. If you take a look here, you can see here's just some normal stitches, and here's where we've been joining our work together with slip stitches, and you can see the chains there. It's not the prettiest part of the booty, so we want to get that on the bottom. That's why we flipped over and we're working on the opposite side now. So I will uh, work a double crochet in each stitch around. I'll still have 24 when I come to the end. I won't join it. I'll chain three, turn, and continue working in rows. So this is row six, and then I'll work row seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And when I finish row eleven, I'll come back and show you what it looks like then. When you reach the end of row 11, you can go ahead and finish off, but leave a nice long tail. You can see now how um, by going into rows, we've left an opening here for the ankle of the booty and the uh, not quite as pretty part of our rounds is there on the bottom. Next thing to do is sew the end of this together. So match up your sides here. Take your nice long tail of yarn. I like to fold the yarn kind of in half and pinch it between my fingers and then it'll wiggle right into the eye of my needle. So matching up the sides, I'm just going to sew it together. I like to do a few extra stitches right here at the very beginning. And then as I'm stitching through, I'll usually like go about two stitches down. I'm going right underneath the tops of the stitches. Then I'm going to backtrack a little bit, go back a stitch. Go down about two stitches. Backtrack one. And this will give me a really nice even seam that should hold up pretty well. So I'll finish doing this and then whatever loose ends I have I'll just weave in on the inside. And there is the seam on the back of our booty that looks nice and sturdy. The only thing left to do is give this a nice pretty little edge and a little Mary Jane strap. Now let's see, I've already got a right boot, so this is going to be the left booty. Um, the right booty is pretty much exactly the same, it just depends on which side you're starting on. For this one, I'm going to start in the beginning of row 7. So row 6 was the first row we had, so that's this one right here, and this is row 7. And there are the chain stitches I started with, so I know this is the beginning. 
If that confuses you, the, re the side you start on is not the side that will have the button, if that makes more sense. So I'm starting on, if I'm looking at the top, I'm starting on the right side, so my button will be on the left. So this will be the left booty. So with your green on a slip stitch on your hook, gonna insert your needle just under the, uh, the stitch there. Get that yarn in the back, there we go and join with a single crochet. So you'll pull a loop up from the back and then pull another loop through there. You're gonna work around the edge working three single crochets into the end or beginning of each row. So there's three into there. I'll do three into this next one and so on all the way around. Finishing, so I've got one in that one. I'll finish with two more single crochets uh, in this beginning of row seven and after I do that then I should have 36 single crochets. When you come back around again I've just worked two single crochets into this one that I started so it does have three now and I will just slip stitch uh, to that first one. Now to make the little buckle that goes across you'll start by chaining 15 There's 15. You'll single crochet in the second chain from the hook, so skip that first one. Single crochet right in there. Chain one, skip the next chain. That's gonna be our little buttonhole. And then we'll single crochet across from there. So that's our little buttonhole, so get a button about that size. <laughs> So I'm gonna finish single crocheting the rest of the way across, and then once I get across, I can go ahead and finish this off and weave in my ends. After you finish your strap, tie a little button on directly opposite, and then the main part of your booty will be done. And you could certainly leave it just like this if you wanted to but I think the daisy is the cutest part. So I'm gonna be making the daisy. Like I said, I'm gonna use a hook one size smaller. I used an E for this booty. I'm gonna use a D for the flower just because, well, when I used an E, it was just huge. So I'm gonna be using a D for the flower. Um, so with the yellow on your hook, you'll start by chaining two. And in the second chain from the hook, the first one you made right there next to your slip stitch, you'll work seven half double crochets. A half double crochet starts out much like a double. You'll yarn over, insert into the chain, grab a loop and pull it through. But now instead of pulling through two loops and then the two remaining, you'll grab up a loop and then go ahead and pull it through all three of those at once. And that's your half double crochet. So I'll do a total of seven of these. Let's see, that's three, four, five, six, and there's seven. Now, since I'm working into the uh, chain closest to the slip knot, sometimes it has a tendency to kind of spread out while you, if you work a lot of stitches into it. Luckily, that's very easy to fix. You just have to pull on that starting chain a little bit and it'll tighten right up. So I've got seven half double crochets and I'm just going to join the end of my round to the first half double crochet with a little slip stitch and then I can trim that and weave in the ends in a minute. So with the white on your hook, you can join uh, with a slip stitch into any of the half double crochets. Uh, this one looks good. And you'll just bring a loop through and then bring that same loop through the slip stitch on your hook and there, that way you're joined. To make a petal, start by chaining six. Let's see, that's five and six. Then in the second chain from the hook, so skip one, work a slip stitch. 
In the next two, work a single crochet each. One single crochet, two single crochet, and then in the last two, work a half double each. Half double, half double. Then join into that same stitch with a slip stitch. Now you want to try to get two petals to every half double crochet, so I'll do another petal working out of that same stitch, then I'll do two petals out of the next one, etc. So I should end up with 14 petals when all is said and done. So I'll go off and make those and then I'll show you the finished product. So here's my finished daisy. I've got my one long strand uh, that I left when I chained on. Um, and that's what I'm going to use to sew my daisy to the top of my booty here. So I'll just go grab my needle and thread it. Find the easiest way again. Just fold your yarn in half. Wiggle the eye of the needle right over that and it'll thread super, super easy. Pretty much just want to line this up um, right on the top of the booty right there. So I'm going to want the center to be right about there. So I'll just go through a few of these stitches on the booty, go through a few stitches on the flower until I feel like it's secure. Depending on what size this booty is um, and the probability of little fingers trying to grab onto this daisy, you may need to do a few more stitches than if it was um, you know, for more of an infant that wouldn't be able to uh, pull on the flower quite so much. So use your discretion at how firm exactly it needs to be. I just want to go kind of all the way around the circle of the center and just make sure it's firm and not going to go anywhere. That should just about do it. We'll go up and do the flower one more time. Oops. There's one thing with these petals. Make sure you don't catch any of them in your threads. There we go. And then I'll just take my yarn uh, behind and finish it off. Ta-da! Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, please do leave a comment. Uh, a question down in the comments below and you'll find the links for the pattern and everything else you'll need for this project down in the description. Thanks for watching! And this is the third part um, which we're going to do the edging round. So um, at the end of row 13 so what that is, is to just go between these two shells and go into that space right there and work a single crochet like that. 